Avina, thank you so much for joining us on ITV Gold. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you? Pretty good myself. Um, you know, Saki is doing some incredible work uh, during this pandemic. But before we even uh, touch on all the programs and all the works and resources, I wanted to highlight a quote I read in one of the newspapers today, which basically was talking about the increase in domestic violence, where they're saying that Americans are finding themselves trapped and victims of escalated violence uh, during this pandemic. I wanted to start off this interview uh, discussing what that really means and what is exactly happening in terms of this escalated violence um, since the pandemic has hit the nation. So we're seeing those trends as well. Um, we know that uh, what we've experienced here at Saki for South Asian Women is a drop in calls um, from our helpline, which indicates to us that survivors are not safe and they don't have a safe space to make calls. Um, from the survivors that we've been able to contact with, what we're seeing are pretty significant trends that also indicate that survivors are not safe at this mo moment. Um, a trend that we're, we're seeing is that orders of protections are being violated. More and more men are answering the phone when we're calling survivors uh, cell phones. Um, we're also seeing a rise in sexual violence happening in the community. More, and sur more survivors are asking for um, access to contraception because they're experiencing severe forms of sexual violence. Um, we're seeing violence against children happening now um, and more youth survivors are coming out um, in full force. And also the economic impact of the pandemic has been deeply impacting the community. And so we've been trying to respond accordingly where survivors are losing their jobs. Um, so there's instability in housing, in um, economic security, as well as in food. How has this all happened uh, so fast and you know, escalated to this level? Um, do you know the reasons behind why you know more men are answering the calls? You're not getting enough calls. Uh, the you know the connection with the survivor is getting a little scarce for certain organizations. Your comments on that? Yeah. So I mean, what we know is that everyone has experienced a significant amount of instability. The community that we serve uh, serve live in the epicenter of the epicenter. So if we know that New York City is the epicenter of the pandemic, um, Woodside, Corona, Jamaica, um, Kensington, Brooklyn, Jackson Heights, parts of the Bronx are really the epicenter of the epicenter, and that's the community that we serve. This is also a population that lives um, with um, less economic stability for the most part. And so um, many hourly waged workers, um, many individuals who are, are making sure or have one income in their household and or might have more of a working class um, background. And so the, um, the impact of the pandemic has left um, significant ramifications on the community, which has deep, further destabilized um, their capacity to be able to absorb this moment. How are these survivors reacting right now when they're interacting with you over the phone or, you know, uh, virtually? Um, what are they concerned the most about? Yeah, I mean, survivors are um, facing a very difficult decision. Many survivors who that we've been speaking with, some of those who um, have access to be able to leave, especially particularly abusive situations, are choosing not to leave because they don't want to expose themselves to the pandemic. Um, this is also a population that has limited access to healthcare. And so the resources that are available are incredibly limited. Um, we have survivors right now who are testing positive and don't have, um, are, and are undocumented. And we would consider those survivors to be the most vulnerable of the vulnerable. Um, and so really that the systems that are, are really for supporting the community are not fully um, being able to to effectively support the community at this time. Um, and so what we're seeing that is really just playing out in real life. You know, we've also heard that some of these survivors are being threatened, uh, you know, to be exposed uh, outside, to be thrown outside their houses um, in this pandemic. Is that something that the South Asian diaspora or you know, the women that Safi is helping, um, have you seen that trend as well? What we've seen as a trend is that survivors are, again, making that choice of having to choose between staying with their perpetrator or being exposed to the pandemic, and they're choosing to stay with their perpetrator because they're essentially swapping out one public health uh, issue for another and really are, are concerned about, about the impact of the, the pandemic and COVID. Um, we are seeing survivors who are living in shelter right now, and um, the, of, of those survivors that we work with, many of them have little access to food. Um, and so we are, we are trying to step in in the way that we can. Um, we haven't seen directly where survivors are 
um, you know, being uh, forced to leave their home in the midst of the pandemic, but what we are seeing are forms of power and control that the, the pandemic is being used as a form of power and control. Um, more specifically, you know, again, orders of protection are being violated, Ch child cu custody agreements are being violated. Um, we are seeing, you know, um, econ the economic instability um, as a result of the pandemic, then further exacerbating forms of control between partners. Um, and so inflicting greater forms of economic abuse. We have one, one survivor in particular that we work with. Her, um, her perpetrator has decided to take away her cell phone because um, he has lost his job. And so to basically essentially um, only have one cell phone to streamline household expenses, um, he's decided that they, the family will only use their cell phone. He has essentially cut her off from the rest of the world. Um, and so what we are seeing are instances of that where, you know, the economic instability coupled with the pandemic are being used to further exert, exert forms of control. You know, so this definitely requires somebody like Saki, you know, as an organization to truly step up and help these women. And this is happening while we're all suffering through this pandemic and we're all locked into our houses. I kind of want to go into the programs that Saki is currently providing for these survivors. And, um, you know, how, how, how have you sort of, you know, uh, gotten used to this, uh, you know, change and knowing that you need to help all these women, but, uh, you know, only have virtual access. I would like to know what's happening in Saki in that regards. Yeah, so Saki is doing what it does best, which is really responding to crisis. We've been around for 31 years serving the community, and we work with the community in responding directly to crisis. So we are flexing that muscle. We, we know exactly how to respond in this situation in terms of being able to support survivors through the most difficult, one of the most challenging and traumatic experiences of their time. And I have to say, I'm incredibly proud of our team in their capacity to be agile and really pivot to support the community in this way. So all of our programming has moved virtual. That includes our mental health counseling, our case management, our legal clinics, our economic empowerment program, our job coaching, our job readiness, all of those critical core services um, that um, work directly with survivors in the community continues to function. Um, and I would say our team has been doing a remarkable job in being able to address that. Um, additionally, our transitional housing program has continued without a hitch. And so we're continuing that program, underwriting housing for 11 clients for two years in their own homes um, without a, a drop of a bat. Um, we've continued our advocacy work as well as our engagement. So we've been doing a lot of calls um, specifically like this to educate the community about how um, the options are out there. So if one is not safe, um, options are out there to leave. Most specifically though, I mean, while our most of our programs, I would say 95% of our programs are really virtual, um, we are on the ground. Um, and so um, what we are doing is we have a food justice program, which Saki has had for over a year now, um, and um, has been a stationary part of our office, both in Manhattan and in Queens. Mm -hmm. um, but now what we are doing is um, we're working with a chef consultant who is sourcing food from a distributor, packaging food, everything from dates because Ramzan is happening, um, to eggs, milk, bread, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, um, packaging up that food every single week. And um, we have a driver who's dropping it off at Survivor's Home, um, contactless delivery um, to 50 clients throughout New York City. Um, because what we had continued to hear as soon as we went virtual was the economic ramifications of the pandemic were directly impacting the community. And one of the most palpable ways it was impacting the community was the food insecurity that survivors were facing. Um, and the food insecurity results from the economic destabilization, but also price gouging that's happening. Um, so for us, we wanted to be able to respond because what we know is that survivors cannot heal if they are hungry. Um, so we are on the ground right now in the community. We are also providing emergency assistance, mm. purchasing diapers, um, formula, um, sanitary napkins, all of those critical supplies one needs in order for daily living. We are stepping in and providing that emergency assistance as well to survivors throughout the community. So in terms of rescuing women, Kavita, who might be suffering right now, or who are on the verge of, you know, their life being threatened, you know, we keep on hearing about access to the police and for everyone to reach out and seek help if they are, you know, in danger. Um, but what is your, you know, own take on that? And, you know, what do you have to say to somebody who may be struggling and they could be watching United Gold? 
Yeah, so um, great question. Leaving is an option. It is always an option. If you are in immediate danger, call 911. Um, you can call Sucky's helpline anytime on Monday through Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. through 5 p.m. Our helpline number is 868-6741. Again, it's 212-868-6741. Um, and so an, a, an advocate will answer the phone and support you through your immediate needs, including safety planning. Um, but knowing that safety planning is absolutely critical, especially during this time, and we've been working with survivors across uh, the city to support them through how essential that is. Um, and I would say well, that's one of the first things we did in terms of um, response to the pandemic and working with the community. You know, you're also raising a lot of money to help uh, these survivors uh, through your own campaign. I would like for you to reflect upon, you know, the, the, the vision behind the campaign. What exactly is it doing? Um, you know, I know you're uh, getting close uh, to your goal of raising $500,000. Um, so could you give us an insight into what's happening and perhaps how the community could help? Yeah, that, I get, thank you for that question. So, um, Every, every spring, uh, Saki hosts an important celebration every year. As a result of the pandemic, we've had to, um, we've made the difficult decision to not have it this year. And we, we've decided not to postpone it because it just doesn't feel right. In the midst of how difficult this is and how people are losing their lives and people are getting sick, um, what we want to do is to continue to demonstrate how Saki is an unwavering resource to our community how that we will be here standing beside survivors no matter what happens um, that is only possible because we have a strong community that supports and stands by us and what we know is that while we are and continue to remain isolated we are not alone and survivors are not alone in this moment. And so we are asking for those in our community who feel compelled by the work that we do to rally and support our work in the midst of this moment because we are doubling down our efforts and quite frankly, we are busier now than we have been in years. Um, the work has become much more intense and the fact that we are on the ground as essential workers providing food as well as forms of security, mental health support, advocacy and counseling all of that work is continuing. Um, that can only be possible because of the generosity that continues to happen through the South Asian community. So individuals can go to our website, sucky.org, um, and make a small contribution. Every contribution does count um, from $5 to $500. It can make a difference. You know, looking at this, Kavita, if I was to ask you, what are some of your biggest concerns right now? Or some of the major challenges, you know, taking Saki forward right now and helping everyone, what would you say? I think um, there are multiple challenges that are facing us right now. In the most immediate, what we know is the most vulnerable of the most vulnerable. So undocumented survivors are facing mm -hmm. unprecedented challenges um, because they don't have access to the stimulus package and they also don't have access to healthcare and um, are incredibly vulnerable at this moment. Um, what we know is that once the, the, rent, um, the rent hold is uh, ceases, um, there will be balloon payments that survivors will need to pay um, in the pandemic after that, you know, in a few months. And so that will impact the community greatly. Um, the economic ramifications of the pandemic are, are continuing to unravel on a day to day basis. And so what we are hearing is the stress and anxiety that survivors are experiencing at this moment. I mean, last week I got an email from a survivor saying, I have lost my job. I have no hope. Can you please give me something? Give me an option. Tell me what I can do. I need your support right now. And so we increasingly are receiving that feedback and um, it's unfortunate and it's heartbreaking, um, but it's also what we need to do in terms of coming together to support the community. I think big picture, you know, when we think about the course of our work, it is going to look a little bit different right now, right? You know, how are we thinking about crisis response? How can we continue to remain agile? Um, now that we have two offices, one in Manhattan and in, in Queens, you know, we, are, we want to continue to um, expand the footprint of our work, expand the footprint of our services, because what this moment has demonstrated to us is that we are a critical component to the South Asian community that cannot go anywhere because we serve a population that is, um, that is the most vulnerable. And, and looking into the future, Kavita, looking into while we're, once these lockdown restrictions are brought down, once we start seeing some new normal, how important is this sort of, of work of advocacy going to be for you? What are, are some of the things that you're predicting in terms of uh, 
you know, the amount of reports you could have on domestic violence or the amount of survivors uh, you could be helping at that point. So we have seen a drop in calls um, in our helpline since we've gone into shelter in place. What we are preparing for is a search of survivors leaving their perpetrator as soon as shelter in place ceases. And I think that is where we're going to need strong partnerships um, to help us be able uh, to help us to ensure that survivors have a place to go um, for a temporary period of time before they um, before they can find further and stable housing. Um, so we, uh, we are fully aware of the fact that the um, that survivors are waiting to leave and that there will be a surge. And well, how important is the communication with, say, the city of New York or your local or state governments? Um, if you were to call on them, you know, for resources or support, what would you say? At this moment, we have swapped out one public health issue for another. And so unfortunately, women and children are um, at, the, at the center of what is happening right now in terms of the impact of abuse that um, survivors are going through. Um, but we can't lose sight of the fact that women and children and um, gender-based violence is a severe public health issue that needs their continued attention. Um, what we are continuing to monitor is the impact of how city funding will um, potentially roll out for the next fiscal year and how this could have ramifications in terms of our own budget as well. What we know is that we are in a recession and this will constrict all budgeting across um, New York City and as well as impacting our capacity to be able to do the work. And for us, we need to find a way to continue to power on and remain the level of work, if not more, um, in the midst of what's happening. What's your message out to local officials? They're working really on the ground to for a variety of issues, what do you have to say about domestic violence and crisis management during that time? I, you know, I think it's it is again, um, it is a sense of um, we this work is um, non-negotiable that we are a critical component to the South Asian community. And um, we cannot lose sight of that. We represent and we work with one of the fastest growing immigrant populations in New York City. And so we cannot ignore the fact that survivors and gender-based violence is pervasive um, in, in our community. You know, Kavita, thank you so much for bringing us here on ITV Gold. I truly appreciate your time highlighting this very important issue that is concerning immigrant communities. I would love for you to give out a message, you know, to women first and then to you know, the entire community in general. To the survivors out there who um, are, are looking um, to think of, are thinking about their options, um, please know that Sucky is here and that we will continue to be here. Our number is 212-868-6741. Please call us because leaving is always an option. And for all of the families watching on ITV Board, I would love for you to give out you know, messages for parents, you know, for people, for businesses, for everyone that can help support Saki. Um, just one last message. Over the last 31 years, Saki has been built by a strong, committed community. And now more than ever, we need that community to continue and sustain our work. And we hope that you will rally to support the work that we are doing each and every day.